One of the things that a, a greenhouse does, and uh, some people call the greenhouse technology actually controlled environment agriculture. And to control the environment, we need to control the temperature, humidity, carbon dioxide levels. We can add supplemental radiation, extra light, or we can shade, and we can control the air circulation. So these are some of the things we need to put together in an integrated system. In the research and the literature, you'll see uh, discussions of what's called the P-band. And the P-band is actually the distance or the deviation away from the set point. We can also use that P-band to evaluate different uh, concepts like uh, outside temperature, how wide do we want the vents open, or if we want maximum fan, minimum fan. If, uh, if the temperature is low outside, for instance, and this is some European data where we want to have a 24C greenhouse, which is around 80 degrees, and it's 5 degrees C outside. That's 40 degrees. That's a 40 degree differential. So the P-band will be based upon the temperature difference between the inside and outside temperature. So if the P-band is wide, we're going to have the vents only open, say, 10 percent. And as the, the P-band becomes lower, uh, the difference between the inside and outside becomes lower. So for instance, 24 to 10, that would be um, uh, 80 degrees versus 50 degrees, 80 degrees versus 60 degrees, and 80 degrees versus 70 degrees. Uh, you're going to open your vents at differential levels based upon that P-band. And it's just a more efficient way to run your greenhouse. And you can control these, ends, uh, these kinds of concepts into your climate control system. The P-band can be shifted also based on wind speed. So if the, the higher the wind, we may want to move that P-band to the right. So to look at how wide we, we are going to open our vents. If the wind is blowing pretty good, uh, pretty hard, 20, 30 mile hour gales, uh, gusts, we're going to want to reduce our uh, percentage opening of our vents. So these are some of the things that a, a fully differential controlled climate control system can do. And then with two-sided ventilation, depending on the direction of the wind, you may want to open one side 100 percent. For instance, that could be on the leeward side. And on the windward side, you may only open it 5 to 10 percent. So the wind isn't as likely to rip the roof off. For frost protection, you can um, make some other differentials. You can make uh, differentials based on whether it's raining or not. And then again, for um, gale protection, you may want to, again, think about the leeward side versus the windward side, or closing the vents entirely and turning on the fans. Another concept that we do is, is, is venting with heating. And venting with heating, the idea is, is to dry the greenhouse down. A rose grower, for instance, or a, a tomato grower, as the sun is going down in the late afternoon, will turn the heating system on and open the vents. Now that sounds contrary to your fuel consumption. But what it in fact does is it takes and dries out the air, reduces the likelihood for condensation when the sun goes completely down. Reducing that level of condensation, dropping the humidity by heating with the vents open, reduces the need for pesticide applications. Uh, it can almost eliminate the need for powdery mildew control. And if you're wanting to avoid pesticide applications, the labor that's involved and the pesticide itself that's involved uh, offsets any fuel cost. We can also set our, our, our controls based upon uh, whether it's sunny out or, or cloudy out. If it's sunny, if it's cloudy out, there's no point in, if we don't have supplemental irrigation, supplemental illumination, there's no point in raising the temperature up to maximum photosynthesis rates. So we'll keep the light, we'll keep the temperature low, 
save on that fuel because we don't have enough light to generate enough photosynthates as it is. So sometimes there'll be cloudy day settings and, and um, sunny day settings. For instance, when, it's, when there's lots of light, it's bright out, we're going to raise our temperature up almost uh, 10 degrees above, 10 or 15 degrees above the normal set point. This is a good thing to do because it's already harder to cool a greenhouse because the sun is bright. We're taking advantage of that extra energy to drive our photosynthesis way up higher. Whereas if it's uh, cloudy out, there's no point raising the, the temperature. Some uh, climate control systems, um, in the old days, we just used to set it on a time clock. But what's more important is the astronomical clock. Because I want the, we, I would rather do my heating and cooling based upon whether the lights, the sun's out or not. And most greenhouse climate control computers have a set point, especially the Wadsworth systems and the previous systems. One of the first set points that you have to go through when you set that climate control computer up is enter in the longitude and latitude and how many uh, time zones we are back from Greenwich Prime Meridian. Does anybody know that number? We're minus seven. Okay, so that's seven hours. So, um, so we are going to look at evaluate time tonight, express the minutes to sunset, um, depending on time of year or the day length. Another thing to think about is most photosynthesis in most crops is primarily occurring before solar noon. So most of your photosynthesis happens from sunrise to solar noon. After solar noon to sunset, plants are pretty much going into survival mode. So a lot of people will uh, think about uh, focusing their, their best climate control in the morning and maybe letting the temperatures in the afternoon drift, especially to the higher. Some, uh, as uh, the net metering laws on electricity become more and more relaxed, some growers will buy, start, you could be able to, in the future, be able to buy your power, much like you buy your natural gas, and buy it cheaper, where you allow, you're, not, you're committing to not using as much electricity in the afternoons. For instance, one thing that I do at my own home is they've in, the city of Fort Collins has installed a device on my air conditioner. And what the air, this device does on my air conditioner is through a cell phone, the, city of Fort, the utility department of the city of Fort Collins can punch a button and turn the, the air, my air conditioner off. It doesn't turn the fans off, it just turns off the compressor unit. And in exchange, they give me a $5 a month rebut, rebate air, during the summer months. To this day, I have never known when that unit turned off. I have never noticed. I can't tell because and I know they've done it because I can see it on the power consumption curves. So um, by doing things like this or even dropping your, your fan speed down like I talk with the variable frequency drives, you can get, get away with going away from maximum cooling during the late afternoon or after lunch. This is a overlapping heating and cooling um, philosophy that could be used for humidity control. This is basically designed to heat versus heat against uh, open vents um, for dehumidification. It's a, it's a critical thing for reducing fungicide application. And sunrise is here, sunset is on the right, sunset sunrise is on the left. And you can see in the late afternoon by letting, allowing that temperature to, dry, to, to rise, we're not work, really working too far out of our limits. What some people will do is they'll set their cooling system to respond quickly. In other words, setting the set points closer on the cooling point. Um, and what these numbers are is deviations from the set point. So if this exhibit, uh, we'll, oftentimes we'll schedule our, or design our heating system to, to respond more slowly, have wider gaps, because 
heating mass, the, the benches, the floors, the plants absorb the heat, and we want the heating system to respond slower. But when it comes to cooling, we typically want our cooling system to respond to temperature changes more quickly because um, we're dealing with the sun going in, in and out of cloud cover or, uh, and uh, plants respond better to a faster cooling response on our set points. So here's an example of a temperature pattern on a cold day that may be cloudy outside. You can say we're, we're hovering around the heating point, heating point, and the temperature on a warm day where typically the temperature is going outside of the, um, the cooling points. Ideally, we would like everything to be within the, the, the set points for the heating and cooling. And that's typically where we set things. So like I said, with increased solar radiation, the plants are going to transpire more. They're going to need more irrigation. And we can, set, we can also modify our vents based upon how much sunlight 